So my name is Alice, or Miss Wang. I teach fourth grade uh, at Bethany. Um, and today, we're going to be talking about listening to your child, even if she or he does not like to share. And I want to start by sharing a video. But, oh, one thing, Miss Weinberg really wants to be here, but she actually had dental surgery done today, so she's at home in pain. Oh, I can't make it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you can kind of think of your child as an iceberg. And today we're going to start from the top and we're going to go all the way down and see how can we honor that iceberg. So, this is a video. It's, um, this little president. Kid. Yeah. I love this. This <laughs> <laughs> president and what he does, like his, this like film company, what they do is they actually um, ask kids like what they think about different things and um, and then they kind of make a video just to share with like, the parents, with teachers, with the world, with everything, what kids think. So this one is, goes out to the moms, but the dads actually, it applies to the dads too. So let's see what he says. This one goes out to moms on behalf of all the kids in the world. Here are two things every mom needs to know. Number one, put down your phone. Watch your kid's name's phone. Number two, don't name your kid phone. It's just that right. That's messed up. Number three, we love you. It's just sometimes we don't know how to say it. Sometimes it just comes out screaming or crying. But the next time your kid screams, you know what they're really saying is, I love you, Mom. You're beautiful. Thank you for not making me phone. <laughs> Four, stop cleaning. Our house isn't messy. Our house is awesome. It's awesome because we live in it. My mom got stuff to do. Number five, mom upside down is wow. <laughs> Doesn't really mean anything, but I just thought it was really cool. Wow. It should be like this. Wow, 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 wow. Number six, wow, I have you here. I want to take a second and talk about meatloaf. Meatloaf like a loaf of bread, but it's meat. Mom, we love you, but let's cool it on the meatloaf. Number seven, thank you for cleaning up all the poop. Number eight, have fun for once. We love to see you have fun. Dance in the grocery store. I know I buy all this stuff. Or sing in the middle of a driveway. Oh, it'll feel great. Scare your kids so much, they'll be quiet. Number <laughs> nine, hug more, shout less. Look, I get it, I get it. Sometimes we do, sometimes wrong. But growing up is scary. There's school, there's tests, there's telling times, there's clocks that have hands, there's time, your shoes, and kilograms and kilograms. Kilograms? I don't know, it's hard, but that's why I go to school. It's just hard to grow up. Sometimes we just need moms, moms to tell us everything's okay. Number 10, the secret to changing the world, moms. Without moms, none of us will be here. Moms, kids love you, you, love you, and you. If there was a mom in the world knew how awesome they were, every problem in the world would be fixed. From kids everywhere, thanks for believing in us, putting up with us, and straight up loving us. Mom, you keep us dancing. There's also one for dad, but I actually had to send more moms here, but I'm so sorry. But I more if you really can't present it, there was actually one for video to dad as well. So, okay. Um, I'm going to start by sharing a case study with you guys. So when I was researching about this and just kind of thinking about how to present this, um, I wanted to hear what the kids have to say at first. So. Um, so this health system, like a, it's like a health, children's health company in the States, it's really famous. Um, and they did a case study of, about three years ago, and they tested, where they asked 855 kids from the age of 9 to 13, which are known as, as the tween age. Um, so it's kind of like they're not fully teenagers yet, but they're not children anymore. And they say 
that most kids said that the parents love them big time. And nearly 90% of the kids said their mom loves them a lot. And few kids, only 8% said their moms only love them, and 4% said that their moms love them a little or not at all. So it was a huge percentage. So the kids know that you care. And same thing with dads. Nearly 90% of the kids said their dad loves them a lot. And again, only 8% and another 8% for love them only a little, uh, some or not at all. So as you can see, kids can see how much you love them and how much you care about them. And, but sometimes it doesn't come across like that, right? Sometimes you're just kind of like, oh, my kid doesn't want to talk to me or whenever I say something, they're like, oh, don't worry about it, mom or dad, it's okay. So when they were asked this question, how do their parents share their love and what are some struggles that they have when it comes to talking to your parents, the kids actually said that the parents ask too many questions about what's going on in their lives. But it doesn't mean that they don't want you to care. This is just like a statistic, um, like a statistic of showing you um, what the kids are thinking. But if, as you can see, still a third of them say like the parents ask just with the right amount. And then 17% said that they wish their parents would ask more about what's going on. So you can see that again, that kids actually really, really care about what you have to say to them and about you guys you know, caring for them and things like that. And when they were asked what can parents possibly do for the, the kids, they actually said that they love doing stuff with their mom and dad together. Like 73% said that they like doing stuff with both parents, while 12% prefer to spend time with mom only and I only like to be with their dad. So as you can see, they love to be with both mom and dad. And actually half the kids said that they have meals with their parents at least once a day, and the rest of the kids said they have family meals a few days a week. Now this is based on US data, so depending on you know Taiwan, I'm not sure about Taiwan, but this is just to give you a general sense as to what's happening in the States. Um, and then 40% of the kids said that they would like their parents to be more involved at school. So that could look like going to, um, uh, being chaperones on a field trip, um, coaching a sport, watching their sport, right? We, have, we actually have a lot of um, middle school kids that want their parents to come and watch their sports, um, or concerts, or things like that, or recitals, play like that. They want the parents to be there and to be more involved, even if they don't actually say that. But deep down, when you show up at school, they really enjoy that and they really um, appreciate that about you. Um, and then some even just want their parents to come and just spend lunch with them, you know, just um, sharing lunch and watching, for you to watch and interact with other students and things like that. So, um, so this is just something that when I was collecting data, that was really interesting to see, that even though they don't say these things, but they actually want these things when they were asked. So why do they shut us out, right? I'm not a mom yet, so I don't know in terms of like how it is at home, but it was really interesting doing this research and then even talking to my own students, because what happened a lot last year and the previous years would be I would have a parent-teacher conference with a mom or a dad, and I'll share these things about their kids, and the parents would say, really? <laughs> I have no clue. When he said that to you, he doesn't talk to me. Like, so that got me thinking that, well, how can, and then that's what the parents were asking, like, how did you get the kids to talk to you, and how, you know, why are they willing to share these information with you? So that was my question when I started this. Why do they shut parents out? And, it's actually really obvious. Um, kids between age 9 and 13, they start to share their feelings with their friends. Right? Think about us growing up. Once you get to a certain point, you would rather turn to your friends and share your life with your friends, like you know, maybe your first relationship, your fight with your parents, things like that. These things are shared with your friends. right? So it's kind of like, it's interesting now that we're on the other side and we're looking at you know, our students or our, our children growing up, and then this is exactly what they're going through as well. And then when I was, I remember when I was um, in elementary school and middle school, that was the same thing. I wouldn't tell my mom anything, but I, instead I would tell 
my choir teacher or my friends, and then that's, that made so much sense to me when I was researching about this. But that doesn't mean that we can't do anything about it. There are things that we can do to kind of build that relationship back up with your children. So I'm gonna give you about 18 tips for communicating with your kids, and then at the end of this workshop, we're going to make an action plan together. Well, you're gonna make action plans. <laughs> Um, so the first one is timing, right? I don't know how many of you actually, I remember when my mom used to do this to me. When I would come from home from school, and then right away she's like, how was your day? Did you, um, how was your test? Did you do this, did you do that? And then just a ton of questions. And I was just like, I just got home. I just want to breathe. And then I just don't want to answer any of those questions. So timing is everything, right? The best time to ask, your child about their day might not be right after school, right? It could be um, another, like when they're quietly doing something, when they are, you know, when you see that they're winding down, when they're, you know, kind of, you know, unwinding from school and all of that. Just, you just have to be more observant as to, you know, what is a good time to ask them these questions. Sometimes it's not that they don't wanna answer you, it's just the timing is not right, and then they just have too much going on at that moment to answer your question. So that's why sometimes it comes as, ah, oh, like I don't want to, I don't want to talk to you about this right now. So um, yes, timing is very important when it comes to, you know, even opening that with your child. And the second thing is, is kind of like when I was researching, and they call it parent ninjas. So it's setting up situations that will lend themselves nicely to conversations. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be super hard. It could just be, hey, so-and-so, uh, I'm going, hey, Johnny, I'm going to the store. Do you want to come with me? Or, hey, I need to go pick up something. Do you want to come? Or even just having family dinners, right? There's no reason, or I don't think it's very likely, to sit around a dinner table and then just stare at each other and not say anything. That gets really, really awkward, and then I'm sure, and then that's also the time when your child they're relaxed, and then they just kind of, you know, they're not thinking about school, they're not thinking about anything else, and then that's would be a, that would be a good time to talk to them about, hey, how was your day? Do you want to share something? Um, and then that, and then even having family game nights, right, or movie nights, just to talk about you know, hey, what did you think, think about that movie? Or let's play a game together. And then while you're playing games, a lot of times conversation will just naturally happen because you're doing life together with your child. It doesn't always have to be like a question and answer type. It could just be a conversation. It's, it could be something silly. Um, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, always something that's serious all the time. And then it's very important for your child to see that you have that side of you where, you know, you, you're not only their parents, but you want to be a friend. You want to be an older sibling. You want to even be the grandmother, granddad role in their lives. Um, so it's important for your child to see you wear different hats. Um, starting conversations during tasks when you don't need to make eye contact. This is actually really helpful, especially for um, middle school kids, high school kids, even elementary kids when they know they're in trouble. Um, I see this in my students all the time. Sometimes in the morning they come and tell me, oh, I, I don't have my homework. They won't look at me in the eye. They just kind of look away. They're like, and I'll be like, well, why don't you have your homework? I don't know. And they just kind of look away, right? And then, and then sometimes I look at them. Sometimes when I see that they're really anxious and really nervous, then I just turn around and I do something else and I still talk to them. So I should do this in the classroom too. And then that way, they know that you're still talking to them, but you're not staring them down. You're not, you know, it's not too intense for them. So, um, so this is very helpful, especially for sensitive subjects. Um, you know, it just kind of it allows them to open up without feeling threatened. Otherwise, you know, they might not be more inclined to share if they are too scared to deal with the consequences or they might think that oh mom and dad they're gonna be so mad at me when I tell them this like what can I do like I don't want to say anything I'm just going to stay quiet so this is actually a trick you can even talk to them while you're doing dishes folding laundry things like that so you know just on the side so they don't have to look at you in the eye um, when 
especially talking about something that might get them in trouble or something that's sensitive or even with teenagers. Another tip is to pay attention to how you look in your tone when your children address you. Um, when they say mom, how you respond, right? Do you look at them kind of like, oh, don't talk to me right now? Or do you kind of like, yes, like what can I do to help you, right? Either way, those are the extremes. And the kids get really scared when you're too much into them or when you're just kind of like, oh, I don't want to deal with you right now. Children, they're very, very in tune with facial expressions or in tune with a tone of voice, everything. And then if, you, if we always respond to them like, you're, we're so busy, we're tired, we're, you know, like just go, go play with your brother, go do this on the side, like don't talk to me right now, then naturally that's going to become a habit and they won't want to talk to you because they'll think that, oh, mom is too busy, dad is too busy, um, I don't want to bother them, or oh, this is not a big deal. And speaking from personal experience, that's something that um, I feel a lot when I was growing up. I was an only child growing up, so I didn't even have a sibling to, you know, bounce ideas off of or bounce my stress off of. It was always me, and um, or just with my parents. So I usually end up kind of shying back and then I don't say anything because one, I don't want to be a burden, and two. I know they were really angry or they're really tired already, and I know if anything I say is going to push them over. So I was one of those, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to stay back and I won't say anything. So um, they can pick up on your um, attitude, they can pick up on your tone and everything. So just kind of be aware as to how you talk to them and how you look and things like that. And sometimes children, they just don't want, they're just not ready to say anything yet. Um, it's called embrace the silence, right? It can take seconds, minutes, hours, even days for them to tell you something. Sometimes, um, you know, they can come home, they'll look really sad or really just, just upset, and then we're angry, right? And then naturally, as parents, you love your kid and you want to talk to them about, you know, what's going on. But sometimes they, they're still processing through what happened. It could be a fight with a friend. It could be you know, something happened at school. It could be you know, something happened on the sports field, something that is causing them to feel upset. But they're not ready to share. And then remember, between the age of 9 and 12 or 13, that's when they're going to start sharing with their friends first. So they might just turn to their friends first. And that's OK. That's part of growing up, right? Even now, as adults, we don't share everything with our parents, right? We share with our friends. So it's okay to let them be, and then just watch them from, a, from you know, afar and see, you know, is there a time, are they looking at you, hoping for you to talk to them, or is there a time for you to jump in, or even just ask them if, if you know, if they're upset for a couple of days or something. So kind of, again, like being observant as to finding that opportunity to talk to your child um, and don't demand an answer. If you say, hey, tell me what's wrong right now, that doesn't work. And then they're just, they're just gonna shut down and they won't say anything anymore. That, that conversation will be closed forever. If they feel that, oh, like, I just don't wanna say it, and then they, then they really won't say anything. So just give them some space, give them some time, and then eventually they, they'll open up to you. And then, um, this is very important, don't overreact. Um, a lot of these things I'm sharing today, it kind of builds off of one another. Um, for this one, this is the beginning of either a positive relationship, and then even as you know, parents um, who have teenagers right now, like this is actually really important as well. Um, you can start this new habit, right? Like if your child, if your children tell you something, especially this bad. Like it could be like a fight, or it could be something that happened at school that they're not proud of, or something, but they just want to get it off their chest. They want to share. Um, just stay calm and just kind of walk them through what happened instead of saying, "Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Like that's terrible," or um, "Why would you do that?" Things like that. Because if they, the fact that they come and talk to you about something that they feel terrible about, that's already, you know, they're already taking that step, that courageous step to talk to you. And if you shut them down, then that's going to be it. They won't want to come to you ever again. 
So um, just be careful as to how you interact and how you talk to them. And then it could also be, it doesn't have to be something negative. It, they could also feel that, oh, um, you know, I have this problem with my friend or I have, you know, I want to do something at school and I can't do it or I'm just not very good at basketball, like what can I do? Um, if they come and talk to you about it, you know, if you make it like, oh, like you should, you should know how to do this, or you know, why can't you do this? Then they're also going to shut down. So it's kind of building that relationship with them as to how do you encourage them and how do you talk to them when they're sharing with you. And this is actually really, really important. Um, sharing your own personal experience. A lot of times, what I do in class is. Um, especially when I, um, when, there, when something happens at school, um, in the classroom where the kids are fighting or something, I always share my own personal experience. And then I know a lot of parents um, do that as well. And then research also shows that if you give them a little piece of you, then they'll be like, oh, so my mom and my dad, they're not perfect as well. So maybe I should talk to them more and then find out about what happened. Um, my mom and I, we don't have the best of relationships, but we're trying. Um, she, even till this day, she's a strong businesswoman, and then she travels all the time, she flies everywhere. So growing up, I never really talked to her, but the couple times I got to sit down with her and then she's sharing about her personal experience with me, about you know her time traveling and her time living abroad, just all these things. Um, it made me feel like, oh, my mom is actually a person. It's not just mom, you know, like she also had a life. She also, you know, she's doing all these things. So sharing your personal experience with them will draw them out. And then they might want to, and then it doesn't have to be about, you know, whatever is happening at the time. You could just be like, oh, you want to hear a funny story of how, you know, uh, you, and, you and my dad did this, or you want to hear a funny story about when I, got in trouble or something to just relate yourselves back to the kids, um, then they'll be more willing to share because now it's a two-way relationship. It's not always you asking questions. It's more about, hey, what can I do? Like, I'm human too. Look at me. Let me share my experiences with you. And so now you can ask me any questions and things like that. So that's actually a really good way to um, talk to the kids. Um, my kids now, ever since I started sharing with them in class about some of my mistakes, they're always, now they're like always asking me and then they're, they want to know more about me. They want to share them, uh, um, share their stories with me like during recess all the time. So um, it's a really powerful tool to just kind of talk to them and get them to connect with you. And be willing to talk with your child even when their timing is off. Sometimes, you know, they can come. You can come home from school, uh, from from work, and then they'll be coming from school, and then they they kind of do their own thing. And all of a sudden, when you're really busy with work or something or cooking or something, they'll be like, "Hey, mom. Hey, dad. I have something I have to tell you." I don't know about you, but if I if I had a kid, I'll be like, "Not now. Let me just finish what I need to do right now, and then I'll talk to you." Right? I don't. I'm not gonna make you raise your hand and t and then ask you who's done that before. But kind of just reflect on your own, you know, conversation with your child. If you were one of the parents, which I'm sure, like, you know, I would be one too, because I do it at school too. You know, sometimes there are 23 other kids running around. One kid is like, help me with this right now. And I'll be like, okay, I'll help you in a little bit. Or, um, hey, like, um, I need to talk to you. I'll be like, I'll talk to you in a little bit, right? Sometimes even I forget to remember that you know, when they come and talk to you, they're at a point where they muster all their courage, everything, and they're really to share something with you. So if your child ever comes to you, even though the timing might seem terrible, just listen to them and see, hey, what's up? Okay, I have three minutes, four minutes, let's talk. Or, you know, just to hear them out to see what they have to say. If it's really not something that's super important, then you can say, okay, we can talk about this later. But like, sometimes, you know, especially if your child you know, doesn't naturally talk to you, or you know that they only talk to you when they're in trouble, or something like that. Then you know, just even just just listen to them and see what they have to say, because that might lead to 
them sharing a lot about themselves with you. And then um, also, you don't want them to always think that, oh, mom and dad are busy right now, and then so I'm just not going to talk and play, uh, to them anymore, right? Um, you know, sometimes they might want to talk to you, and then all of a sudden, they realize you're busy, and then, then they'll go and talk to their friends, or their teachers, or something, and then it never gets back to you guys anymore. <laughs> So, so kind of see the opportunity and just make sure that, you know, give them that chance to talk to you. Now, this is really interesting. Um, interact on their interest level. So this is more for middle school, for high school. If your child likes to text, text them. If they like to do emails, email them. If they like, if they're on Facebook, Facebook private message them. Now, notice, it does not say comment on their pictures or you know write on their walls or make it very public because they still think of you guys as their parents so they won't they'll feel embarrassed right but if you text them or email them right then they'll be like oh my parents are so cool um i can just share with you last year my fourth graders they so in class we we do google classroom and then i let them talk to my gchat ask homework questions and things like that they talk to me all the time when i say all the time i'm saying nine o'clock at night time they're talking to me they're like hi this way are you asleep yet i'm going to sleep now good night mm -hmm. like they're constantly talking so and then they don't do that at school they never come up to me and just say hey like can i just hang out, well they, they sometimes do, but I'm talking about kids who they really, really don't usually talk to me during a school day, but they would G-chat me at nighttime and just to ask a question, right? Um, so if your child um, likes to text, likes to email, likes to do G-chat, do that with them. And then you never know what's gonna come out of that, right? Um, my fourth grader is now two, constantly. Hi, this way, how are you? Can I talk to you? Like they're, they're, they'll just say hi, 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 and then they're just constantly talking. So, um, so try that um, and see if it works. And then another one is get information in manageable chunks. So what do I mean by that is that when they share something with you and you see that you know they're getting really upset or they're getting um, you know they you, you can feel that limit is coming up then just let them, just be like, okay, let's talk about this another time. I think that you're tired, I think that, you know, um, it's too much for you to talk about right now. How about you think about this and then talk to me later. So just kind of giving, give them a way out so that they can be more willing to come back and talk to you later. Because sometimes they feel really overwhelmed by all the questions, um, especially as they're growing up, right? Um, they might feel that, they don't want to share everything at once, or it's just too much for them to share. So just be okay with saying, okay, how about we pick this up another time? How about we talk about this another day? And then let's figure out you know, another time for us to talk about this. Just giving them that way out so that they can feel more comfortable coming back to you and being able to share more with you later on. Maybe at a later time, they'll share more things, right? And then they have time to think about things <coughs> they'll be more likely to share. So, so instead of just kind of, you know, asking them everything at once, just giving them that, that time will be really, really helpful to get more things out of your child. That's right. It's this supervision for these kids upstairs yes. or everything. Yeah. Until, yeah. Um, and sometimes it's good just to listen, right? When they talk to you, I know I do the same thing as a teacher too. I just want to give advice. But sometimes I just have to figure out, okay, this is a kid that just wants to tell me things and that it's okay for me to just listen and not say anything and just say it's okay and then just send them off. This is the foundation of them wanting to trust you because if they can know that, that you're listening and that you're not going to judge them, you're not going to you know, keep on giving them advice that they just don't need at this point. They just want somebody to talk to. And that's why they talk to your friends because friends, they don't always give advice. They just kind of listen and just stay close and they just, you know, like it's there as a support. So you want to be that support to them first, then they'll be asking for some, uh, for advice later on. So I know it's hard as adults and, 
you know, as people that want to help these kids, right, your child, um, but just giving them that space and then just giving them that time to just tell you things and just be okay with it, eventually you'll see uh, progress coming and then they'll be able to share more and more with you as you go. And use, and then this is really interesting because it actually makes a lot of sense, right? Sometimes you can use news, pop culture, and current events to your advantage. Um, maybe not so for little, little kids, but even for little kids, um, you know, like you can play a game with them, you can talk about, there's so many lessons that can come out of the game. Um, or you can watch a movie together or listen to music together um, and then just ask, like, what happens if something like that happened at school? Like, what, what would you do? So, like, there's so many lessons you can get out of it. Sometimes, the kids feel really awkward talking to their parents. Like there's nothing, to them, there's nothing to talk about. I <laughs> still remember sitting in a car with my mom for a 20 minute car ride and said nothing. And that was so awkward and so uncomfortable. But I didn't know what to say. My mom didn't know what to say. So we just kind of sat there and we just stared, we didn't even stare at each other because she's driving and I'm just kind of like, Okay, what do I do? <laughs> right? And then, so, but if she were to say, hey, like, you know, I saw this on the news, like, you want to talk about this? Or, hey, like, that game that you're, where you're playing or watching, or, like, um, tell me more about that, right? Just get that conversation going. It does, again, it doesn't always have to be about their lives. It could be just anything. Just get them used to talking, right? It's kind of like a practice, right? Um, uh, an athlete wouldn't start running a marathon before they learn how to jog and how to pace and do all these things. So it takes time. If you want to get down to their iceberg that's inside, you have to go from the, the surface and go all the way down. So talk about the non-important stuff, and then as they can, as they see that, you know, see you guys as people, just people and not parents, then they're more likely to share and more likely to, you know, do um, life with you guys. Um, so it's, it's important to kind of just have the serious side, but also show them that, you know, I don't just want to talk to you when you're in trouble. I want to know about your lives. I want to know about the music. I listen to music too, and I watch movies too, and then let's talk about that. Right? You want to see, you want them to be able to see you as more than just serious parents who just, or protect, overprotective parents, or parents that just ask a ton of questions. You want to show them that you guys are humans too. And then, now, there are also times where you do need to ask specific questions, especially if you want a real answer, right? If you say, how school, it's so broad, right? It's like, how school during my Chinese class, my music class, my core teacher class, lunch, recess, after school, what is it, right? It's too much. and then. They have to think about oh everything that went through like that that they went through at school and then at the end of the, the day they'll just be like it was fine because as a collective whole it could be that it was fine right but then if you want to say hey how was that science test or how was um, your best friend Ashley today or how was this today then if you give them more specific questions then they'll be able to answer you more specifically now in order to do that. You have to know things about their lives, and in order to do that, you have to be able to listen and to share. So, so everything is all connected together. All these tips are actually one big loop. So, if you want to ask specific questions, then you know, of course, you have to know about your child a little bit before you can ask that question. So, again, goes back to listening. Goes back to making sure that you're building that real relationship with your child. And be interested in what they're interested in. So if they like reading, ask them for a book suggestion. Like, hey, what are you reading at school? And then read it with them on the side and be like, hey, like, what chapter are you on? I'm reading this too, and then can we talk about this? Or if they like football or they like volleyball, over the weekend, be like, hey, let's go, let's go play some ball. Or go to see their games. Or, you know, um, if they play an uh, instrument, then be like, hey, can you play this for me? Or come to my, uh, I want to come to your concert, you know, like just let your child feel that, you know, that you're, in, you're invested in them, 
that you want to know what they're interested in and not so much as, oh, you go to piano class, I'm going to track you down to piano class. It does, it's, that's different. It has to be something that they're truly, truly interested in, um, their passion, right? If they like to cook, invite them to join you in the kitchen. Be like, hey, can you help me peel, help me cut? And then that's when you can share your stories with them, maybe recipes from your family or just, you know, funny stories of how, like, you know, something happened when you were little and then while you were learning how to cook, just something. Like, just all these little things will just come as you do things with your child and then you talk to your child. Um, it's always good to have a buffer, right? Like, you, if you have a book that you're sharing, then that's great, right? Like, that's your buffer. If you have a sport that you can connect your child <coughs> and yourself to, that's your buffer. So, and then conversations will just come naturally out of things. And then you're not forcing these conversations to happen. So definitely try to find like an interest in your child and try to just you know, participate in what they are interested in. And be approachable and available. When I was looking for the pictures, there are so many pictures of kids looking so bored and adults around them, they're just on their phones and things like that. And again, I'm not saying you guys are doing that, but I'm just saying that, you know, just really spend time with them. And then, so you're not on Facebook, you're not on Line Message, and then you're not on all these things while they're talking to you, right? Um, my mom does that to me still. Like, I'll be talking to her, and then she'll just be like, uh-huh, yeah, wait, what did you say again? What was that again? Right, so you don't want them to be like, oh, I'm not important, like, I don't want to, like, my mom's not really listening to me, my dad's not really listening to me. Um, just kind of give that time to them and know that, you know, this is the time between you and your child. Um, so be approachable and be available. And be trustworthy. This is also a really important one. If your child comes to you and says, hey, I have something I need to tell you, I don't want you to tell mom yet, or I don't want you to tell dad yet, of course, like, you have to assess the situation and decide. But if they say, oh, I just want to talk to you first, and just listen listen to them and you know, see what's going on. And then, of course, you can share, but then I wouldn't say, like, oh, I talked to your dad, and then we both decided, or both of you go into your child's room and be like, hey, we heard about what happened, like, this is not okay, and things like that. That's breaking that trust, right? If a child comes to you and wants to share something with you, it's important to listen and to be like, okay, I won't say anything, but I would really like for you to share this with your mom later, right? I really want you to share this with your dad later. So um, think about this. I'm not going to force you, but I would really want you to be the one to tell, right? So again, you're not break, breaking that trust between you and your child. Um, and also, sometimes they might come to you and they might say, oh, I don't like my glasses, or I, I don't like my clothes. Then, um, natural instinct would be your glasses are fine your clothes are fine right but then to them that might be really important you never know where it's coming from it could be that somebody was making fun of their clothes at school it could be that um you know their glasses there, there's something wrong with it so it might seem like little things that they're complaining about and they're asking you for but just say why? Like, why do you need some? Why do you need new clothes? Or why do you need this? Or can you tell me more? Right? Then that way, you know, again, that's opening up a conversation door for um, you and your child. And then that way, it shows your child that oh, I, my mom really cares. My dad really cares what I really think. Right? So no matter how small the problem may seem, there might be something deeper underneath. So don't just dismiss it as oh. You know that's nothing and it could really be nothing but you don't know at that point so just use that and then be able to talk and if they say oh I don't like my clothes because I've been wearing this for years right then that's a good lesson for them for you to talk to them about you know I know you've been wearing this for a long time but you know right now it might it might not be the best time for you to buy clothes you have so many clothes and then you can talk about like the experiences you can bring back your own experience of when you so like again everything is connected so um, just use that as opportunities to talk to them and to share with them and to teach them. Now this one is really cool. Um, I did it with a couple of my students 
Um, I don't do it with all students because not all of them like to do this, but if your child, and then actually this is really, really helpful, maybe between parents and kid as well, because they might not want to talk to you all the time, right? But if you have a journal, like a family journal, and just have them write down their thoughts, and then you write down their, your thoughts, and then you just kind of share, and then just trade back and forth, that might be a good way to communicate with your child. There was a student that I had a couple years ago that didn't really want to share at school, and then obviously I don't see him um, after school, and I knew something serious, ha serious was happening at home. So I said to him, I was like, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to write down notes for you, like just things I see in you in class, and there's things I want to share with you. You don't have to respond to me, but I'm just going to give this to you every day. You can read it. You don't have to read it. It's your choice. And then that kid eventually started writing to me every single day. And then to the point where if I don't write something in the journal the next day, that he actually asked me, oh, Ms. Wei, can you just take a minute to write something to me? Or did you um, read what I wrote to you yesterday? Um, it becomes your outlet. Right? Again, like it's something that at the beginning your child might be like, oh, I don't want to write to you. Like that's, that's weird, that's awkward. But if you're writing notes to them, and if you're writing things to them that you see, then you're building that relationship. <coughs> um, especially for kids who love to write, and then we have so many writers um, in our school, and then, um, even I, knowing your children, like even in this room just now, um, if you just have that kind of like journal with them, or just or even you can just have them email you their thoughts or things, depending on what they like, right? Then it'll be a good way for you to communicate with them. Sometimes face-to-face -face communication is really difficult for kids, especially when they're transitioning from upper elementary to middle school and middle school to high school. But this is a way for you to still check in with them without making them feel uncomfortable. And again, this is like kind of like the overall everything. Build a real relationship with your child. Listen to them when they talk, be interested in what they tell you, and give them your undivided attention, and share. So it all comes back down together. Sharing your lives with them, listening to them, talking with them, you know, playing a game with them, just doing life together as a family, as, as mom and child, as dad and child. Um, I know a lot of my friends, or my like, older friends, who have kids, they would, and then also, this is also for people that have multiple children at home, they would take each kid on a date. So like a mom and dad, uh, mom and daughter date, where dad and daughter date, and then you just go out, just, you know, spend some time outside, just you one-on-one, and go, you know, like, you can, do, you can you decide with your child, like, where do you want to go? It could be um, amusement park, it could be mall, it could be anything. Just spend the time together. Um, just get into that habit of doing it, and then eventually they'll start opening up to you. I know it's really difficult. Um, it's not easy to, you know, talk to your kids sometimes, but it's a habit. If, you, if they see that you care, and then the way that you're caring is not overwhelming them, and they feel that they're safe, because at the end of the day, you're still their parents, right? You're their disciplinarian. So, um, or it like, you know, it might be not seem as cool thing to do to be with their parents all the time, right? But as long as you, they know that you care, they'll still come back to you. And then children actually go through this stage where they're super attached to you at the very beginning, right? And I know you all know this. Super attached at the beginning, then when they enter their teenage years, they kind of just push you aside. And then, but if you can build, and, but that's a really critical time. If you can get them to journal with you, to still talk to you, to go on like, you know, mom, dad, mom, daughter, dad, daughter dates, or mom, son, dad, uh, dad, son dates, and then just still investing in them, playing games with them, then even though they might pull away during that time, eventually when they get a little bit older in their 20s, they come back to you. So, but if that time is not, you know, protected, is not um, fostered well, then, that would, then this relationship will be not as fixable later on. So we all go through, like we all go through this, but it's just how do you kind of
send them away a little bit, but still be able to stay attached and then be able to bring them back to you. So that's the critical time between um, the age of nine, actually beginning eight to 13. That's like the most critical time to invest time in your children's lives in a way that is loving, but not judge. No, there's no judgment and for them to feel safe with you. So you have my PowerPoint in front of you. Um, I'm also gonna give you some other things. So if you're an elementary parent, um, you can actually take both. I'll, I might just end up giving you both anyway. Um, I have printouts for you that there are 25 ways to ask your kids, so how was your, uh, how was your school today? without asking them, so how was school today? So there are actual um, questions that, so this exact paper is this printout right here. So you can ask them these questions um, and then as like a starter to help you. Sure, thank you. And then if you're, and then I'll just, I'll just give each um, of you both sheets. This one is more for secondary, so for um, fifth grade, actually. So these are questions that you can also ask them without asking them question. The secondary one is, I know it's really hard to read. When I was trying to print it off, I couldn't enlarge it, so I just printed it. If you, um, I, if you want the actual copy online, um, you can, I'll grab my email there and then I can email you the actual copy. I know it's, when I print I was like, oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was already a little bit too late. So I'll grab my email there and then you can just email me if you want this copy and then I can email it to you. I also have an action plan paper, so, you can kind of think about this, like what are two things that you want to try first? Do you want to do a journal? Do you want to ask your child to go on a play date with you? Do you want to do anything? Just kind of for you to know, because I really want you to walk out of this workshop trying something with your child. So you don't have to share with anybody, but just for you to know that, oh, I, I would like to try this because I think my child would really enjoy this. And then that will bring me one step closer to my child. So it's what um, I would want to try, like which one you want to try. And I would try this by doing, like how, how would you try this? So, yeah. And then you can take some time now if you want to. And then I'm just going to open questions, comments, anything. I hope it's helpful. Um, Some of us have children that are older than 13, right. and then, um, and then, but you know, so I understand that that was a critical period. And, um, so we're still, you know, aiming for the best we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm curious about if your if your child doesn't um, doesn't ever answer a question that you're really curious about what happened, like some incident in their life, and uh -huh. then you never get an answer, or you never, you know, they never get back to you because they're always going to tell your their friends that. So. So that's okay, right? I mean, like, what's the deal with that? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Actually, I go through that when I was a kid, too. Like, I wouldn't tell my mom or my dad anything. But um, something just to keep in mind of is just, you know, sometimes, yeah, they don't, they, they might feel really embarrassed to share, or they're just kind of like, oh, I don't want to talk to you right now. Like, you're just my mom, right? But then, like, if you try to share your experiences with them, and then if you just, you know, take your child out and then just be like, hey, let's do something fun together and then um, and see. Like, it's kind of like a relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the whole thing of you wouldn't tell your new friend everything about them. Mm -hmm. So it takes time. It takes going through the surfacey stuff and then eventually you can go deep. And then, and then like, you know, especially for a high schooler, 
they have they don't want anything to do with their parents. But but don't give up. Don't you know just don't just feel like oh like she won't talk to me or she won't talk to me and that's it. But if you just keep trying, keep showing that you care and then keep and then when she or he does talk to you, then you know, then just be like, Oh, I would love to talk to you about this and then kind of share from that, then it's like it's kind of like you have to like kind of they'll give you a little bit and just take that and then celebrate that and then go on and just see how it comes about. Um, but journaling would be a great one, or just texting, um, you know, emailing like that my mom always share articles like she loves to share articles with me and then so I'm like now I'm learning to appreciate this so so even with my mom I wish I really wish she could be right here because she'll just be like yeah everything that I say um, I was like the worst possible kid for her to go through because I refuse to talk to my parents um, but now I'm willing to appreciate it. so there is light in the tunnel um, but yeah just keep trying don't give up because um, you know, like at the end of the day, you're still there. You're still her mom, and you know she'll want to talk to you. And yeah, but definitely go on, you know, mother-daughter days, and you know, just talk about stuff, and then ask her about. You, know, you don't have to ask her like, how's your day, or that like that specific questions. But again, just like, you know, oh, I listened to this song the other day. Like, do you like it, or you know, or just something light to start with, and then go. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's helpful. Yeah, because like I remember when my mom would just ask me super personal things, like, but then she asked me like, oh, you know, how was like, uh, like, did you see the news? Do you want to talk about? Like, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm more willing to say something. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and for a while, she did try to play games with me. And then, and I was like, oh, this is actually really cool. So I started playing games with her, and then we started talking because of that. Where she'll kind of figure out like I really like to listen to like embarrassing moments of her and then she would just tell me those things mm -hmm. and then I'll be like, oh like it's too long or something like that. But then like eventually I'm like, oh that was actually pretty cool. So yeah. So these strategies they actually work in terms of like me being on the receiving end and seeing, oh yeah, like I did see my I saw my mom trying some of these things when um, when I was growing up. So yeah. But it does take a long time. There's no definite like time frame. And then it's different between child to child to child. So it's kind of like you just have to be patient and just you know, work on, you know, just keep trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, overall, it was very nice and interesting <laughs> to know, but let's keep one thing in mind that every child is different. Right. Every set of parents is different. Um, if you look at the life in Taiwan, yeah. it's entirely different from what we have back in our country. So mm -hmm. they have both the parents have to go. Mm -hmm. So practically they all three leave or four in the morning, same time. Parents work till late evening, they have dinner with their friends, then they come back home, a child goes to Kushi, but I'm talking about the Chinese. Okay. Uh, yeah. By the time they get back home together, dinner time is already gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I personally feel is, like earlier you said, you know, when the child comes home, we should not just straight away go on and ask him, how was your day, what has happened? You know? yeah. Because that's the only time when your child has already been through the throughout the day. Yeah. And I personally feel that, you know what, since you've been there eight hours, why don't you put another one hour, finish everything, then enjoy your dinner, yeah. watch your TV, then go to sleep, mm -hmm. right? But when my child comes and if I don't talk, I just leave him for one hour, two hours. By the time the time is finished, then the child has to have a dinner, watch his team, and go to sleep. So right. Right. what do we do in that case? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be. You can obviously still ask like how their day was and all that, but like in terms of like, oh, like, I don't know, like kind of frame the questions in a way that's like, oh, like how was, you know, if they went to, like kind of like go back, backtrack a little bit so they don't have to think about the whole entire day. And just So like if their last step was the prep school, like, oh, what did you do at prep school today? Like, um, did you, you know, like, what, or what did you eat for dinner or something? Kind of like give them more specific questions so that they can, like, so they're not thinking for the whole entire day in terms of, oh, like I did this and I did this and I did this. So like kind of give them like chances to answer your questions. 
Um, I would also suggest like maybe even just like kind of unwind with them a little bit, just be like, oh, um, let me share about my day first. And then so you can start with that, like sharing about your own personal day, and then be like, oh, like I was really tired about this, or I, I saw this um, at work or something. And then be like, oh, and how, so how was your day? Then it kind of gives them, it shows them that like, oh, you're also sharing and you're also, you know, being available and things like that. So that could fix, instead of like just them coming home and you asking the question, kind of like flip it a little bit and then just be like, oh, like, let me tell you about my day for a little bit and then see how that works. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's super difficult in Taiwan, like life here is just so busy, um, but there's also the weekends, right? So on the weekend, you can do something fun together for an hour and then just kind of like spend time together outside of like the hectic lifestyle and everything, so. Uh, no, sorry, I think maybe I didn't put my question to it in the right way. The whole purpose of asking a child as he enters the home is not to invade his, right. his, his privacy or not. The whole purpose of being a parent asking is, if there's something wrong, I'm here to help. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So maybe at that moment, I'm like, okay, you know what, take a break. We we'll start again. Like for example, if he missed his previous day homework or something, yeah. then at least I know today he needs extra 15 minutes. But if I straight away put in extra 15 minutes, it's going to look right. I say, you know what? Take a break. Go and watch a TV for half an hour. Let right. me finish my work. And we both together, we'll sit and we we'll finish your homework. we do that. So the whole purpose is not to make him more angry. Right. It's to try to understand mm -hmm. so I can fix the rest of the evening with him make him feel more happy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. What I want. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, exactly. So, it, it, like you are saying, right, it goes to, like, you know your child the best because you spend all of this time with them. Um, so if you know that your child does better by just taking a break, then yeah, definitely have to have a break and then talk to them afterwards. Like, this is not to say, oh, like, don't talk to your child. Like, it's, it's like a, you know, don't invade their personal privacy or anything. It's, it's more like, how do you find that time? I remember we talked about the finding the, the time to talk to the child. So it goes back to, okay, if you see that this is the right time to talk to them, then jump in on them for sure. Yeah. And then of course, like I'm no expert at this at all. Um, a lot of times it's also trial and error. Like, there are things that you can try with your child that if you see that, um, I don't know, like taking him out or her out doesn't work, then maybe try a couple times and then and then if it really doesn't work, then it's okay to not do it. Just kind of like, just kind of like try. These are just tips to help you. And then, of course, at the end of the day, you know your child the best. And, you know, so you know how to you know, talk to them and deal with them, but this is more to give you tools to kind of help you and then kind of, you know, if you're really, really running out of things to do or to say, like, these are the set of things that you can try on top of what you're, like, what you've already been doing, so, yeah. And I know, like, life in Taiwan is so difficult, it's so different, people are so busy, like, I see kids running around on the street, like, little kids at 9, 10 o'clock at night time, and then, which is so different for me, like, you know, because I'm, I, well, first of all, I grew up in Jersey, so I couldn't even <laughs> run outside by myself. So, yeah, so it, it is a different kind of vibe, and our school is very rigorous in terms of, you know, the amount of homework, the amount of work that they have to do, and then it's important to, you know, support them, and it's also important to, you know, let them have fun, and just finding that balance. You don't want your kid to see you as, oh, my mom and my dad's coming, I need to do everything right now, or um, I need to hide everything. Just having that open relationship with them and then showing them, it's okay if you make a mistake. It's okay if you can't do this. I'm here to help you. I'm here to you know, share my experiences with you so you won't make the same mistakes. And then, trust me, like my mom said to me all the time, and then I still make the same mistakes. And sometimes you just have to let them walk through it themselves. Even though you know it's gonna end badly, but you're there to protect them, you're there to help them. So, so yeah, so they have you and then you are, you do know your child best. So, yeah, so the, the purpose of this workshop is just to give you tips and give you tools 
so that you can have all these things for you, um, for you to ask questions, for you to talk to your kids, and things like that. But choose um, what is useful for you, and if you have any more questions, feel free to email me to ask me. Um, if I don't know the answer, I can search, I can ask, um, Thank you. Thank you.